Hello, and welcome to Low Code in 30. I'm Jeff Goldberg, a member of the Evangelist team at Mendix. In today's webinar, we're going to spend 30 minutes discussing artificial intelligence and machine learning in the world of rapid application development using Mendix. Low Code in 30 is a monthly webinar series dedicated to educating you on the benefits of low code application development in your company. Over the past year, we've concentrated on the fundamental components of the Mendix low code platform, covering topics like accelerating DevOps and application lifecycle management, building mobile experiences, comprehensive security, and openness and extensibility. You can view these recordings via the Low Code in 30 playlist on our YouTube channel. In this new season of Low Code in 30, you'll learn about how Mendix is expanding the low code ecosystem through complementary technologies made more accessible through the platform. Discover the evolution of apps to experiences made easier through visual programming. And discuss the challenges and opportunities self-service application development brings to bear within the enterprise. Before we begin, let's explore what the Mendix platform is and how it helps companies just like yours make the future. Mendix was born to help enterprises win with apps because it's the fastest and easiest low-code platform to create and continuously enhance any kind of app at scale, including web apps, offline-first mobile apps, REST APIs, microservices, and more to fit a variety of use cases. Mendix helps you achieve your goals through a visual, model-driven development platform, enabling professional developers and stakeholders in the line of business to collaborate throughout the entire application lifecycle. Everything from requirements gathering, development, deployment, and finally operating are integrated into the platform to help make developers' lives easier and to bring them closer to their customers. As a result, development is faster and more efficient because the business and IT combine their domain expertise during application creation. Application quality is significantly higher because requirements and outcomes are in alignment, and total cost of ownership is lower because adopting an agile and iterative process reduces rework after applications go live. Through the late 20th century until now, artificial intelligence has been dramatized as a crazed robot overcome by the monolith, or an artificial intelligence building indestructible machines to eradicate the human race, or a civilization of robots who created an artificial world for humans to live in as they are used as batteries to keep the machines alive. Just to name a few. And while that's all science fiction, there are some hard truths upon our society. The fact is, deep learning is a thing, and it's evolving artificial intelligence at a rapid pace. So fast are the advancements, it's changing people's lives for better or worse, disrupting business models for laggards, and creating new market opportunities for entrepreneurs. But what does it all really mean? And as businesses experimenting and discovering new ways to pull ahead of the competition, how do you leverage these advanced capabilities without making large investments in research and human capital? Put another way, what's the quickest way to an ROI? To understand that ROI, we have to rely on some terms. The term artificial intelligence arrived in our world in the 1950s as engineers pioneered the first intelligent machines and programs. It's reasonably simple, possibly oversimplistic, but the foundation of AI is to make computers and machines mimic human intelligence. Shortly after the advent of AI, machine learning became the shorthand for machines to learn without being programmed. The growth of data science ushered in by the big data era has given rise to a variety of tools that make creating the programs and algorithms machine learning takes its cue from easy and accessible to more people. However, at the end of the day, many of the models built with these tools require setting the rules. This is where deep learning changes the game. While it's technically a method of machine learning, the key difference is the AI is trainable using supervised inputs, those we feed to it, and unsupervised inputs it finds or derives on its own. At Mendix, our AI-assisted development capability, Mendix Assist, 
is doing just that. Initially, our R&D team trained a neural network how to read microflows, the logic layer of a Mendix project, using 10 years of data to get it going. Today, Mendix Assist has the ability to predict at any point in a microflow what action a developer may want to add with an accuracy rate quickly approaching 99%. Unlike the monster Hollywood has made AI out to be, Mendix Assist speeds up development for experienced programmers and teaches new developers the right actions to pick when making apps for their teams. Despite all the advancements over the past five years in AI, many companies struggle to capitalize on the technology for a number of reasons. In most cases, when a company decides to make the investment, they believe they have to build an elaborate AI and data science practice, like building a beautiful new bathroom, to take advantage of this technology. The challenge here is it requires a lot of upfront costs, finding qualified talent, writing the algorithms, building the infrastructure, and more. Achieving the expected ROI is fraught with peril and diminishes the technology's promise to move the needle in the marketplace. What you really want and need is the equivalent of adding or fixing a tile in your existing bathroom that gives you the enhanced capabilities you want to a wider group of people at less cost and time to stand up and execute. This is where cognitive services from Tier 1 cloud providers come to the rescue. Each one offers a suite of capabilities for their customers to deliver solutions and experiences. From facial recognition, character recognition and natural language processing, to speech to text and text translation, services like Google AI, Azure Cognitive Services, and SAP Leonardo provide access to the algorithms and compute power required to provide accurate results fast. Unfortunately, wiring up these services to projects can still be a challenge, and that's where Low-Code and Mendix step in to help out. Mendix offers drag-and-drop support for many cloud providers' cognitive services through the Mendix App Store. A repository of reusable components, the purpose of the App Store is to make reusable componentry available to your private enterprise and the broader Mendix community. Just search, then download modules directly into projects to start using them in the visual modeling environment. So let's put it all into context, because on the surface, a lot of these AI services seem more like novelty than reality. The world we live in today is data-driven, and time is one of the most valuable commodities we have. In the business world, we are measured in terms of how quickly we respond to questions, challenges, setbacks, and opportunities. The sheer volume of data, requests, and responses we receive impact our decision-making capacity and capability. This is where AI and the deep learning capabilities of cognitive services abstract away the mundane decisions we constantly have to make so we can have time to think about the important stuff that has real consequences. Here are some implementations of cognitive services using Mendix that help drive efficiency and guide smart decisions through logistics, order management, and emergency services. Our first example is a delivery management planning app. And in this app, what's happening is there are sales orders that contain items. They need to be loaded onto a truck and then delivered to customers. So if we look at this map, it starts off basically enabling us to pick an item and calculate the optimal route. In order to grab the license plate of the right truck, we need to add an OCR API. And I'm going to use Google's OCR. So if we go out to Google, we can go ahead and add the Google OCR API to our Google Cloud Console and get our credentials because we'll need this credential in order to make the connection to the API and have it analyze our image. So once we have that API key, we can go into the Mendix Studio Pro and go to the App Store. And inside of the App Store, we're going to do a search for OCR. And we'll see that there's an OCR module that we can go ahead and download directly into our project. 
So now we've downloaded that module directly into our project and we can start accessing it. But first there are some errors. You can see that we need some items from Community Commons, which is another module. So we'll go ahead and we'll download that as well. And that will go ahead and remove our errors so we can start working. If we look in our App Store modules, you'll see that the OCR is there and we can verify our URL and also add our API key to the solution. Now we can start building inside of our app the functionality we need to take the picture as well as run the OCR. We're going to add a new entity to our domain model that's going to take a system.image generalization. This is going to allow us to store our image. And now we're going to build out the page that's going to enable us to upload that image or take a picture of that image and send it to Google to have it analyzed. So we're going to create a microflow that goes ahead and instantiates the image object. And from there, we're going to look for some widgets. And there's an image viewer widget, which will actually show us the image. And then there's also an image uploader widget that we'll use to facilitate the upload. And if you're using the camera widget, the camera widget will go ahead and once you take the picture, it will auto save that and you can run the microflow that will do that. But for this example, we're just adding a couple of buttons that allow us to upload the image and then run the OCR. Once we want to set that image, we'll go ahead and we'll commit that image to our database and we'll be able to refresh it in the client. Now to process the image. So in the OCR, we're going to drag over the example, example OCR, and we're going to push the image through that sub-microflow. A sub-microflow is basically a sub-function. And if we go to that, we can see what's happening is we're taking our image, we're encoding that file, and then we're calling the OCR, which is going to return a string. And if we go into our de delivery management planning app again. And I'll just fire up my mobile browser here. I'm going to take a picture of a license plate. And the thing is, is what we need to do for this use case is we need to take a picture of the license plate to make sure that we're actually loading and loading onto the right truck because we don't want to take the wrong truck. So by doing this, we take that picture and now the app tells us that we've actually confirmed the vehicle. It's lined up. No one else can take that vehicle. And we're also loading the information, loading the stuff onto the truck. And that's OCR. The next example is a catalog within SAP of different computer items. So think of it as a product catalog that's being run by SAP for uh, different people to order uh, information. So if we look at this app, it starts off with an image upload capability similar to what we just looked at in the OCR, but now there's a search functionality. And if we look at this classify product image microflow, you can see most of it's finished and basically it will take the information, retrieve that, and it will put that criteria out there. We want to use Leonardo services from SAP in order to classify and get the image that we're going to upload. So we download the machine learning foundation connector from the App Store, and that goes right into our App Store modules location. And if we look at the toolbox on the right hand side, we can see that we can actually easily drag and drop the classi classified product from image function right from here. So this really, really saves a lot of time because I don't have to go ahead and create a whole new microflow. I can just drag this item out onto the canvas into my existing microflow and I can set the search image to it. I can give it a variable and just like that, I can save it and I can start using it in my application. So no coding required, all of that's taken care of in advance. I can reuse this module as I want to. 
So we're firing up the app and we see our smart catalog and now I can go in and click the image and I can browse and I've got a mouse here and I'll search for that mouse. And what this is going to do is it's going to send that image up to Leonardo and Leonardo is going to come back and it's going to put in the search string so you can see the mouse. Our final example is actually using a number of different cognitive services. We've actually trained this API to recognize the difference between cats, fires, and car accidents for emergency services. So here's a real world use case where cognitive services can actually come into play to help save lives. I'm gonna go ahead and just input a, an entry manually, and I'm gonna take a, an image of a cat. So I'll provide my address, and then inside of my comment, I'm going to actually put in some French because let's say, for example, I am a tourist walking down the street and I see a cat in a tree. I want to be able to put in my own language, but if I'm in Boston, I don't want to have to think about translating that. I just want to be able to type that in. And once I type that in, it will go ahead and it will actually translate that for me so as a, an emergency response technician, if I'm receiving this alert, I can actually see in my language what is going on. And that's where text translation from Azure text, text translation services comes into play. It can actually auto detect the language that's being entered and then respond in the given language that you choose. And now we can see that it's a cat stuck in the tree. The image classification has put it into a category of a cat and it's all good. Let's recap. Cognitive services are not about the rise of machines or replacing jobs or taking over decision making. The purpose of artificial intelligence and machine learning is to assist everyday decision making by swiftly processing ever increasing amounts of data to uncover potential insights, enhance communication between different parties who otherwise would not be able to talk to one another, recognize patterns in visual information to deliver upgraded experiences, and also to help drive workflow. It's also important to remember, creating algorithms is one thing, implementing them is another, and both can be hard. What Mendix does is it makes it easy to apply these technologies so that developers focus on solving the business problems at hand, rather than having to go through all of the plumbing and hard work to stand up these technologies.